Okay, we're continuing here in the Haggadah of Rav Chaim Kanievsky, and he says the following idea, Baruch I'm sorry, he starts, Va'ekaches avichem es Avram, says that Hashem took your forefather Avram Avinu, Va'eilich Ha'isav B'chal Eretz and he brought him to the land of Eretz Yisrael. So he points out over here that the Torah says that Avram Avinu was 75 years old when Hashem finally took him and brought him to Eretz Yisrael. So the question is, is that when he was 40 years old, he discovered Hashem already. Why did HaKadosh Baruch wait another 35 years until he actually brought Avram Avinu into the land of Israel? If he discovers Hashem, he knows what life is all about, his mission is going to be to bring the godliness of HaKadosh Baruch into the world, so send him to Eretz Yisrael immediately. Why is he waiting so many years? So he writes that if you look in the words of our Rishonim, we find that the Lech Lecha, the command of going to Eretz Yisrael, to the land of Israel, that in and of itself was one of the Nisyonis, one of the ten challenges that Avram Avinu had in his life. If Avram Avinu was 40 years old at the time, and he was spry, and he was energetic, and he was upbeat right now about just finding Hashem with all that inspiration, if HaKadosh Baruch Hu told him, leave your house, leave your father's house, leave your town, leave your country, leave it all behind. It's a no-brainer for Avram. Of course you're going to go. He's fired up to go and do Hashem's bidding. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu made him wait 35 years. 35 years it had to percolate inside of him, but as Rav Chaim points out, when he was 75 years old, he's already a much older man. To travel from Choron all the way to Eretz Yisrael when you're 75, it's not an easy feat. And therefore, HaKadosh Baruch Hu made it that he delayed in the command to go to Eretz Yisrael in order to make the challenge of Lech Lecha all that, much, all that much more for him, which of course, the greater the challenge, the more reward a person will receive. Then it says, the next paragraph, Baruch Shem after Chosel Yisrael Baruch Hu. Blessed is Hashem who, who keeps his pledge to Klal Yisrael. Baruch Hu, blessed is he. So, Rav Chaim points out over here, is there, was there ever a doubt that Hashem's not going to keep his haftach, his promise? Hashem promises, you're going to go down to Mitzrayim, you're going to go down, you're going to become a slave nation, but you have nothing to worry about because I'm going to redeem you and I'm going to remove you from the land of Israel. So if Hashem says something, do we have a doubt that he's going to follow through what he says? He's not like us. We say, yeah, we'll take care of it, and then we never take care of it. There's the famous statement in America is, I'll try. What does I try mean? It means I'm not going to do it, but I want to make you believe that I, I'm going to do it. So I'll try to do it. And then 10 years later, the guy asks you again, did you ever, no, I'll, I'll try to do it still. So Hashem doesn't say, I'll try. HaKadosh Baruch says, I'm going to do something. So if he pledges to redeem Klal Yusuf from our enemies, so then what's, what is the great feat that Hashem did? Of course he's going to redeem us. So he points out over here that Hashem... He's got no skin in the game over here to redeem the Jewish people. And Klal Yisrael ourselves, it's not like we did anything so valiant that we deserve the redemption that HaKadosh Baruch Hu brings. And therefore, we are thanking HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Thank you for pledging to take us out of Mitzrayim in the first place. The fact that you promised that even though we're going to become a slave nation and we're going to be under the iron rule of a, of a wicked nation, you're going to redeem us. Thank you, Hashem, that you promised from the beginning that you're going to redeem us. We're not thanking you that you followed through. We know you're going to follow through. But that you already told us that you're not going to leave us there, that already is a tremendous gratitude that we have. And then he points out that we're also proclaiming that we recognize that unlike human kings and human rulers, and human presidents who make many, many promises along the campaign trail, and then they almost don't keep a single promise that they say they're going to do for the people that have elected them, or the king that is running his dominion over there, and he promises, I'll do this, I'll do that, and then he doesn't follow through. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu is, of course, not like a king of flesh and blood. He is not like a president of the United States of America, on the other hand, the Kodesh Baruch is omniscient and omnipotent. He is all-powerful and he is awesome in his might. And therefore, he doesn't need anyone to get in his. He doesn't need anyone to help him along. 
If he says that he's going to do something, he is going to do it. He is unlike a person of flesh and of blood. So he uses this as a springboard to understand the integrity of the Rebbeinu Shailam, his integrity. So since that we are to liken ourselves to the ways of Hashem, and we are supposed to emulate His ways, so therefore we are supposed to have a great level of integrity and honesty and truth to the words that we say as well. And he quotes over here from a sefer called the Sefer Hasidim, that anyone who speaks the truth and does not speak falsely, not even in his mind. So that's the Sefer Hasidim is adding those words. Not only are you careful with the words that come out of your mouth, but you're even careful with the, th- the, th- the words that are in your mind. So then all of the words that that person says will be fulfilled. He can decree something, and Hashem will fulfill what this person has decreed. As it says in the Pasuk in Eiv, you'd, you would utter a decree and it would be done. Meaning, if a human being down here in this world would be so careful with their speech, they would be so careful with the trait of emes, of honesty, as we know the chaysama shel HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the stamp of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, his seal, when he signs his name on a document, it says emes, it says truth. So if a person in this world will end up saying the truth all of the time, and they'll only think the truth, they won't even think something that's untrue, then when they speak, their words are certainly going to be able to have a great weight upon them, and they will be fulfilled. And Reb Chaim was not speaking about himself, but from all the stories that we learned before he passed away and after he passed away, we see that when he would decree something, and he would say something, many times people came with their medical issues, and he would say, don't worry about it, go back to the doctors and tell them there's nothing to worry about. And the doctors had just taken CAT scans of cancerous uh, moles, uh, 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 whatever you, yeah, tumors in their brain and in different parts of their body, he would wave his hand and say, it's, there's nothing there. Tell the doctors to take another CAT scan. And they would go back and they would take a CAT scan and there was nothing there. Children that were supposed to be born sick, Rahman al Islam, he would tell them, the doctors know what they're talking about. You're fine and the baby's fine. And the doctor would be born fine and healthy and the mother was fine and the baby was fine. Because if you're a man whose words are always M is always true, so then your words are going to be fulfilled. And he brings down a story here that a man once came to Rav Chaim Kanievsky, again as we pointed out that he opened up his doors every single day to numerous hundreds of people that would come to speak to him. And a man came in with a very long list of questions one day. Now Rav Chaim Kanievsky doesn't have the time for a long list of questions. The man sits down with him and he starts asking one after the other, after the other, after the other. So Rav Chaim Kanievsky looks at the man and he says, he says, how many more questions do you have? So the man, who was afraid that Rav Chaim was going to throw him out, he said, just one more. So Rav Chaim said, okay, very well, ask. So the man asked the next question, which he said was the last question. And then very quickly he started asking another question. At that point, Rav Chaim said, Sheker, you're saying falsehood. That I can't allow. And he refused to answer any more questions. I asked you how many more questions. You said you have one. You lied to me. You said you really have more. Sheker, falsehood in the house. Rav Chaim Kanievsky, that's not going to hold water. And he refused to answer any more questions. So he's pointing out that just like HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Shom after Chosay, he guards his promise. And from him, we are supposed to emulate his ways. So we have to learn to be people of truth and of integrity as well, that when we say that we're going to do something, so then we have to try our best, of course, to follow through with, it, through with it. If you know that you're not going to do it, then just say, I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. The, or at least, at least a person should say the words, Bli neder afterwards. Bli, without a vow. You're going to get around it? Yes, I'm going to do it. Bli neder that way, if you don't, at least you're not bound by the haftacha, by the promise that you made. So, HaKadosh Baruch is emes, the Torah is emes, Moshe Rabbeinu is emes, and Klau Yisrael is Yisrael itself. The word Yisrael, which is our nation, is Yasher Kale, which means we are the nation which is Yashar, we're straight, 
kale like HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So we have to be also an emistic of people, an honest people. And if we do, then Be'ez Hashem Yisbarach, our words will be in the sky, and our words can come true. And all that we daven for, all that we ask for, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Hashem, He can't say no at that point. If we're honest and we're true and we, we mean what we say, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will listen to the words that we have to say. Have a wonderful night.